Love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. While everybody's talking about the volatility in 2022, might I remind you of how important that I have encouraged investors interested in building a, an investment portfolio for their future to identify with different strategies. And a lot of people want to go for the pie in the sky, making money overnight, getting rich overnight. I'm going to chronicle my M1 finance portfolio, which is comprised of 100 holdings. These are dividend growth holdings that have done quite well over the last couple of years. I haven't done an update on this for quite some time, but you'll be interested to know how it fared in the face of this adversity in 2022. And while everybody else is support, uh, sporting losses of over 50% in a lot of the high growth names, my portfolio is actually up right now, and it has really stood the test of time from a defensive perspective. I'm going to talk to you about how you can get a hold of this portfolio via a very simple link to me. I'm happy to share it with you. No strings attached. You can send me an email requesting. I'll send you the, the portfolio routes to you so you can enjoy uh, this portfolio, amend it how you will. But I'm going to kick you into the M1 Finance portfolio now. And we're going to track this progress, how it's fared in 2022 in volatile markets. Guys, please enjoy. This is the uh, M1 Dividend Growth Portfolio. And uh, it's been a little minute since I've kicked in here. These portfolios with these value names can be forgotten about during times of volatility. And then you come back to them and you're like, wow, this is incredible. You can see here on the charts this is what all the volatility, everybody's losing their shorts and losing their sleep over. Um, I'm uh, still silently killing it in this portfolio. It's a great defensive way to uh, to invest. There's close to 100 uh, dividend stocks here in this portfolio. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, very, very low beta in this portfolio. The changeover is relatively low. I'm adding Taiwan Semiconductor to this. Uh, and I'm chopping Woodhouse Holdings, which is an energy holding that um, spun off of ExxonMobil some months back. Uh, I'm up. Uh, and so just a, a nice portfolio to just sit on and, and allow it to make me money over time. For you guys that are new to the dividend tutorial uh, here in M1 Finance, you'll know that I'm coming up on my two-year birthday in this portfolio. So December, uh, I'll have uh, two years in this and quite impressive on the amount of inflows here. 25,000 of inflows strategically over the course of this portfolio started uh, back some time ago with about 1,500, I think is what we started this whole girl with. Uh, but uh, over 10,000 of gains in the portfolio mixed between a nice uh, healthy uh, capital appreciation of just over 8,600 uh, as well as the earned dividends. Now, both of these are expected to go up over time, especially the earned dividends. That's a little bit more guarantee as this portfolio is built to render dividend income. Uh, and the market gains will fluctuate uh, as the market comes off. This uh, not too shabby uh, to still be in the green here um, in what has been a pretty horrible 2022. But this is the, 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 the real value in investing this way. Uh, value investing can save you a lot of sleep at night, and uh, it's an excellent way for me to uh, add an additional layer uh, on my multiple uh, portfolio accounts that I have, and I seek one strategic advantage with this. Um, I don't buy ETFs. This is all comprised of single stock, uh, and I've been very, very happy with its performance thus far, especially in the face of uh, some pretty crazy markets. So we'll come down here and we'll take a look at the allocation as I've uh, broken it down in the portfolio. If you guys do want this portfolio in its entirety, you're going to have to email me. You can just email me at ryan.independentinvestor at gmail.com and I'll forward you over a link to this. The exact portfolio, unfortunately, the uh, affiliate link in the description uh, will get you the portfolio, but it's only going to com be comprised of 50 holdings as M1 Finance won't allow me to share any more than that. For whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, so if you want the whole portfolio, just email me and I'll fire it over. I've shared it with a ton of people already. Um, and uh, nobody said thanks. <laughs> so I would imagine they're doing all right with it. 
Um, this is how it's broken down in a year of, you know, 2022 volatility. Um, this is how it's, uh, it's shaken out. Healthcare has really outperformed. We all knew this up huge. And technology is underperformed. With that said, with the names that I've uh, placed in this, a little bit more along the value side of the house, your Cisco, your Intel, your IBM, uh, and the like, uh, we've we've done well. We're only off a couple percent, which I can live with that. And a lot of people can say that they can live with downturns, but uh, I think a lot of people are facing the reality of downturns of 50% plus in some of these names that they just thought were a shoe in to make them rich over time in the stock market. Uh, did what I always tell uh, them or warn them that it can do, and that's humble people uh, in understanding what the, the real uh, potential in markets are, uh, and this is a cool way of doing it. Financials have really held in nicely. Consumer staples have held in. There's a lot of green in the portfolio uh, in a year that a lot of people are down, so couldn't be more satisfied on the bottom end. Energy has just ran away with itself with the inter energy crisis globally. A couple of underperformers. Uh, telecom being the biggest one. We kind of knew that. It's been a laggard now for uh, greater than about 12 months. It's been terrible. Uh, really wouldn't chalk that up as um, uh, any surprise. Uh, and I do look for a turnaround story here. I remember as portfolio dollars flow into this, um, those dollars will go to the lowest uh, allocated, the ones that are hurting the most. Um, so I'm fine with that. It's really cool. M1 Finance will take those dollars and it'll spread it out across this, but uh, this is a custom built portfolio by me. Um, this breaks it down very, very simple. The 11 sectors of the S&P 500 are all represented in this portfolio uh, in the custom allocation and or percentage that I have set uh, in way of a target for each of those slices within uh, how I've broken down this portfolio. So if you click into any one of these, um, you're going to find the respective holdings uh, within each of these slices within this pie. But now I'll kick you in and we'll just go down the entire list. This would be like stock picks on steroids. A lot of people will come out with their top three stock picks to buy. I don't do that anymore. Um, it, it is a waste of time. Um, I like investing this way. This is cool. This is uh, separated in here by dollar amount. So the largest holding I have is less than $1,000 in this portfolio, and then it goes down the line. Boom, boom, boom. We add to these holdings slowly over time where appropriate, where it outperforms. It's probably going to get less if any dollars allocated to them. Where they're down, they get more. Um, as you can see here, some of these have performed really, really well. Some of them have, have, have underperformed, and that's totally fine. These are all quality names that I wanted to push into the portfolio uh, and enjoy more of a long-term type of perspective. Um, as surplus capital comes into my financial plan, I like to segue dollars to this portfolio when and where I can. And in, in, in the tune of $25,000, i have already explained to you with understanding that over time, this portfolio will probably grow, and it has. It really has. It's done quite well. And as we scroll through the list, some outperformers stick out. Certainly, IBM has finally got some favor. Amgen, Cis Cisco's down off a little bit. Abvi right above it. Shell's done well. Anything energy related. Um, Broadcom there. Uh, there's Travelers, a Dow component, as well as Goldman Sachs, uh, both 25% uh, performers uh, at a clip. Home Depot is always a strong name to add to the portfolio. A little surprise there with Duke down a bit. CBS. Health up almost 30%. Fantastic stuff. Um, so uh, Lowe's doing quite well there, up 10%. So can't scoff at these numbers. Anything healthcare related has really got the nod. Um, Disney, what a what an incredible underperformer that's been. But we can live with that. We really can. Um, new flows will come into this, and it'll buy that telecom sector. Interesting enough, T-Mobile right below it is up over 20%. Go figure. Uh, T-Mobile. Uh, outperforming Disney there. It happens. There's going to be uh, times in the market where they're in favor and out. Disney's just really out of favor right now. Uh, APD, one of my favorite materials uh, names. We have a $500 bill in it. No big deal, right? AT&T coming back nicely, only off 6% now. You stay in the name long enough. There's Starbucks down a touch. It'll come back. Uh, Costco has just been a fantastic holding of mine. Not even one share of that, and we're up $125 in the name. So the idea here is that uh, you spread your wealth across these names, able to incur some, some of these 
um, these situations that did not work out too well. I mean, I could have bought Abbott Laboratories. I could have bought Intel. I could have bought Leggett and Platt and, and American Tower REIT, uh, as well as some of the top end like Disney. Those are fantastic companies. Um, but if you just happen to buy them at the wrong time, they're, they're really going to be a drag on your portfolio. Um, and, and that's why I like to buy them this way in this portfolio, because we can add to them as they're down and um, and live to fight another day here. Look at Lindy, Lind Corporation here. Fantastic. Enbridge. Uh, what a nice holding that is in the energy space. Bank of America off 15 bits. You know, who would have thunk it? Um, just, uh, you know, all really good companies. But if you enter into them in the wrong time, it just subjects yourself to that single stock risk in each of these names. Um, you know, Dominion, another great example of a great company that's just, you know, had it had it rough, just like Chevron has had it rough prior to this uh, most recent run up in energy. Look at John Deere in the industrial sector. Fantastic uh, performance there. You know, a lot of green in the portfolio for a lot of people struggling right now to make any kind of sense in the market. Um, you know, I knew this would work before I did it. Uh, this is the validation that it works like a Verizon off healthy. 30%. I'd buy more of the company right here. Um, and, and some of the companies that have done really well, look at the aerospace sector, look at the uh, um, uh, General Dynamics and your Northrop Grumman, look how much favor they've got. Uh, look at Comcast down, wow, 30%. Incredible to go and kind of roll through here and see what's worked and what hasn't worked. And this is just a snapshot in time, guys, as we go through this list. Um, I would expect that uh, a lot of these names turn to green. Look at Altria off, uh, off marginally. Um, that'll change over time as the market comes a little bit more into favor. Um, look at Kellogg up 20%. Man, the staples have just absolutely crushed it. Um, but, um, you know, look at that, J.P. Morgan. So if you had picked the wrong banks, you know, you'd be suffering right now. Look at Dow. You know, so two in the material space are doing quite well, and, and Dow not so much. Uh, U.S. Bank off 20%. Um, there's Canadian Bank. That's doing really, really well for a while, and now it's kind of fallen off a little bit. And then Warner Brothers there that has um, uh, really slipped uh, from its spinoff from AT&T. Um, but that's the list in its, in its entirety, guys. Again, shoot me an email if you want me to send you over this portfolio, and I will. I'm happy to do it. It's all good. But I think the takeaway here is to understand the diversified nature of this to understand that this right here is 2022 in a nutshell. While everybody else is facing losses of 50, 60 percent, I am in certain names. But in this particular uh, portfolio with this particular strategy at my back, um, really goes to show how a defensive strategy can really weather all markets. And um, I think that this can be attractive for a lot of investors out there looking to get involved with financial markets, but uh, not succumb. Uh, to the volatility of the market and really test their risk tolerance beyond what they can uh, stomach from, from day to day and from year to year. It's kind of cool to invest this way. Makes it a little bit of fun and takes a lot of the stress and guesswork out of um, the investing game. And I, and I think there is an element of fun that can be had by investing in this manner. So with that, we'll kick you back. We'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the dividend growth portfolio here. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial enjoyed the review of the performance of the portfolio. I couldn't be more satisfied after a couple of years of putting the strategy in play. It just allows me a drop point to put information when I've got a, a, or a little bit of a, um, uh, an opportunity to put some surplus capital uh, into a drop point like this. Uh, it works. I know the money is working um, while I'm out doing my thing, and I think it's attractive to a lot of other people out there uh, who might resonate with this idea investing. A lot of people think they can handle the swings and volatility in the stock market, and I'm here to tell you that not everybody can. And this strategy allows a lot of people to embrace this idea of passive investing over time, dividend growth investing in those companies that have paid shareholders over time, and I think there's a lot more people out there that can and should resonate with this idea as opposed to always trying to look for that next best thing in stock market investing. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the message. Leave your comments at the bottom. Subscribe to the message here on the Independent Investor Channel. Hit the notification bell and share the message with friends, family, anybody out there that you know is looking to get more involved with their own personal finance. I'm looking to empower one investor at a time to discover the power of self-directed investing. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck.
and your investment future.